Today, we make the beers eat great again. Shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> I have a splitter for the front bumper of the Beer Z that one of my good friends Sebastian made for us. This is actually fitted for this bumper and even the lip is integrated within the bumper. It's a pretty cool lip, so I'm excited to put this in. It's not full carbon fiber. The underneath is like a fiberglass type of fill, but it has a nice sheath on top of it, which I personally like. When it comes to splitters, I don't really like putting expensive splitters on there or like full carbon fiber splitters on there because as it being right under the front bumper, that is the scraping point of every car. On my last front bumper, I had an Aeroflow splitter on there, and I liked it because it was like a sheet of metal that could take a beating and it always looked great. And this pretty much hopefully will do the same. When it gets scraped, it shouldn't do anything to the bottom. And as you can tell, just driving around just a little bit, oh, I've already scraped okay. some of the stuff. Yeah. So I'm excited to get this lip on there. As well as it looks good, it's gonna protect the car a little bit and should hopefully reduce some of the damage. I have also had some interior pieces for the BRZ that I haven't put in actually a very long time. That was that was sent out by FT86 Speed Factory. Shout so, huge shout out to the bros. They're always hooking us up and sending out some cool stuff for the BRZ. And if you guys have been watching for a while, you know that we already have some Alcantara suede pieces within the car of the interior. And today we're gonna finish that look just a little bit more. It's like a suede with red stitching to match the rest of the car. This is for above the gauge cluster. And then we have two pieces right here that are like side speaker doors for the side of the doors. I'll show it to them and get to it. But we're gonna be putting these in as well today as well as that front splitter. So let's roll into it. Shout out to way back in the day when we actually taught you shit. TJ has laid out all the nice hardware. You're gonna need some quarter by 20 thread. Easy, easy install. Just gotta drill some holes into that front bumper and we're good. It's really important to find hardware that fits the holes that you're going to be putting it through. Because if you find some that are too small to wiggle around, you won't get the best hole that you can probably achieve. So this is the size we're going for. It actually fits pretty perfectly. It's a little bit snug, but as you twist in, it goes in just fine. We're going to need to make our rod holes a little bit larger. We're going to be using the hardware that the rods came with, and they're actually quite girthy. Here are where those rods are going to go in, and we're not even... We're not even close to getting that in. So we're, we're definitely gonna need to drill this a little bit larger before we proceed. When it comes to picking a drill bit size for the hardware you're gonna be using, what I typically do, but I just simply will grab the size I'm gonna be using and square it up to the bits that I'm choosing. I obviously chose this one, but I'm redoing this just for reference here. But as you can see, as you put it behind, it's just slightly larger than, than the actual screw themselves. And that makes sure that it goes through simple and easy and we have no issue. After fitting it, you now have all the holes and you know where to drill. And at that point, it becomes super easy. Now it's just a matter of drilling it out, lining it up, putting the hardware through. That's a lot of fiberglass. Tell them what you're doing, Teach. Some of the hardware that we were going to be using for these holes is to put it in. Some are a little bit bigger than others, so I'm finding the right fit, and we are going to just drill them out just to make sure we have no issue when we actually put it in, and to make sure nothing gets caught. So I'm just gonna drill it out one last time. We also need to remember, Cal, that when we put this on, find our holes in which we're gonna put this on the front bumper. We could do it like that, like that's a totally good option, and like I respect your choice of where to put them, Cal, but I was more so thinking like, here or, or something like like this. Hmm. Just what about from here? Oh. I want it to follow like this line and be parallel. Oh, oh, that would be sick. Teach. Yeah. For I don't. Sure. Not so too close. Almost. I want to put it like here. Sure. So TJ and I just got all of the nice little hard focus. You fuck. The, the little hardware bits and TJ's doing all the the bitch work and tightening them all. Good on you, Teach. I got the hands. You got the torque, That's Teach. That's good, man. Torque, torque, torque team, Teach. The torque team. Torque team. All you bros out there keep asking me, when are we gonna do the Tron B or Z? 
I don't know, whenever we're done with this cuck of a Miley. TJ, <laughs> when are we gonna do it? Huh, TJ? I'm waiting on you. Okay, we'll do it, we'll do it tomorrow. I want her to do, we can't do it tomorrow. We can't do it tomorrow? We're gonna be at premium model stuff. We'll do it Monday. Actually, we have Miata. No, on Monday we have to get the cars ready for drift day on Tuesday. Then well, Tuesday we're, we're drifting. And then Wednesday will probably break, we're probably fixing all the broken parts that we did. Saturday we're gonna get tires. Sunday will probably be a day off. We're never working on my book, my BRZ again. Wait, that looks. Ooh. That was tight. I have to keep the, I have to keep the light behind your head. All right, I'll lower it. We'll look at it, and then we'll find our rod first. So I almost want it like up here. <laughs> oh no. No, no, no. I'm... Will that get closer? And when I turn, no, am no, I gonna no, rub? No, that's not your. You're not thinking about how much bigger your new wheel will be. So once you have your rods in, you pretty much want to eyeball where you want it. You can measure it. I'm, I don't think we're about to measure it, but we're gonna pretty much see an idea of where we want it. Uh, hey, speak for yourself, this, man. Oh. I would measure the shit out of mine. TJ's a big picture maker. I'm a detail-oriented. No, I mean, I'll just probably take an, like an, an inch and a half, two inches there, and match on the other side, and that'll be it. I'm just, obviously there's, Many methods on how you want to approach doing it, but for me, fuck it. Not fuck it. I just I know what I want, and that's it. So that's what we're gonna do. Whoa! You're lucky Sebastian knows what he's doing, and you didn't just fucking crack my carbon fibre. Look at my side didn't fall. Well, because you're not tightening it. Hey. You would have if if it wasn't me, it would have been you. If it wasn't me, it would have been you. Looks good. It doesn't hang out too, too far, so it's a nice subtle touch. The little lip that we were worried about when the wheel sinks in, it actually comes in a little bit, which is a nice. So we're good on that side. The first piece of interior that we are going to replace is this plastic gauge cluster. So we're gonna put this new one on top of it, and it looks like it's just a simple screw. The only thing here holding this in is like these tabs and screws. So I looked underneath the OEM one, and there is a small place for a screw. So we're just gonna take that out and replace it. After taking the screw out, you pretty much just pull it and it pops right out. Simply gonna be replacing it. Line up all the tabs again. And then once it's screwed back in. Nice. Then the speaker that we're replacing, all you do is simply take off the door panel and then you turn it over and it's pretty much just right here. This is on the opposite side. You take the screws out and then put the new one underneath and screw it back in in all of its screw points and then you put the panel back and that's it. So you have the normal leather and then right here you have the Alcantara suede that matches what the seats linings are. If you're an interior guy like me, you'll find the art in that. Some people just don't even care about that stuff. But me personally, I like having a clean interior and an interior that looks updated. Especially for the BRZ, I try to put a lot of like the newest parts on it and just make it look, make it look clean. And I think these couple pieces just like set it off. Because I also, if you guys remember, I added these as well, like probably like almost a year ago. They're like padded knee pads, and then they're, they're the, from the same company that makes this and that makes that. I would be driving home the BRZ today, but we are waiting for the 350 to be finished at this point. Because remember, yesterday we dropped it off at TE Motorsports to have the alignment fixed and to have our new PBM arm put in the car. So I'm reading comments from yesterday's video. And the thing I'm seeing the most is you guys are saying, if your hands hurt, wear gloves. I never thought about doing that actually. I've always seen it, but I've never, I never thought to do that. Day three of TJ's women hands. Baby hands. And they're fucking hurting. I actually, I didn't show it in the video. I didn't film the back end of yesterday's event, but I started wearing Zach's gloves. Oh, fuck yeah. And I wasn't too sure I liked the way it felt. It felt like numb and I couldn't feel as much. and. I'm just not sure how I felt about it, but I Give think I want to get a new wheel. I'm running an NRG wheel, and nothing against NRG, but I know that they don't make full, complete one-piece wheels, and I want to get a one-piece wheel so it was like less flex. So I think I'm just gonna search for a new wheel and find my wheel soon. Give it some time to your hands around it. That looks pretty fucked up. It hurt, dude. Why is it like that? It's like burnt? No, that's a blister. Oh, from like this? From like letting go of the wheel and like catching it, it just like was rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. That's and crazy. I, I felt it hurting, but I never stopped. And all of a sudden, like I looked back down, there was a blister. And I was like, oh fuck, whatever. Went for like another 10 minutes, all of a sudden just went as I was driving, all over my wheel, yeah. Oh. And I spun out. I 
said in yesterday's video that I really want to go with a 300 rather than a 600. It's hard because like I, I listen to the comments a lot and maybe sometimes I listen to them too much. But when I talked about getting a 600, everyone, the top comment was everyone saying, no, don't get a 600, get a 300. Now everyone's like, TJ, no, don't get a 300, get a 600. I don't want to hurt myself. And that's my biggest thing is my safety concern. So I probably will get a 300 and I'll play with that. And then if I feel after a month, or whatever, I'm just like, I'll grow out of it. I'll just sell it and get a new one. It's not the end of the world. I'd rather play it safe than go dangerous and hurt myself. I think a 300 would be more fun at first anyways. After a month or two months, you're going to grow out of it. I'm 6'2 and have a 250 on my first bike, then sold it three months later to 600. Everyone's literally saying that. I'm sitting here about to end the video, and Sabrina is hosing me saying, oh my god, I can do your outro. You do the same shit every single time. So because she is so confident in this, Sabrina, end my video. End it. I'm not here. They don't want to see that. They don't, they don't want to see me try to be you. End it for me. Okay, guy, can I at least, like, what was this video about? We installed a new splitter on the car, and we installed some interior pieces, and I was going to update them about the 350 and what happened when I went to go pick it up. Hey, guys, this is where I'm going to end today's video. You know, um, today, you know, we did a lot of work on the 350, and I'm really <laughs> happy. Nope, BRZ. Oh, fuck. We did a lot of work on the BRZ. Um, I'm really happy with how it's turning out. You know, we're, we're just waiting on those wheels and that's gonna be completely done. I know a lot of you guys have been asking, thinking that I abandoned it, but I didn't. You know, I was gonna go pick up my 350 tonight, but they weren't finished. They still have to put some arms in it. So we're gonna go pick it up tomorrow morning and yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for watching. I will catch you tomorrow. <laughs> Peace out and keep moving forward. You didn't let me what she meant to say was, we went to get the 350 and they were pretty much about done, but as they were finishing up, they replaced that one bent arm that we saw. But as they were dialing it up and just doing the last thing, which was the camber, they realized that the other side, like the other arm that wasn't initially fucked up, was coming up short of where it should have been. That arm is actually bent too. So I destroyed both arms. And we should pick it up tomorrow at 9 a.m. and then we're heading up to premium to get our headlights fixed. So I won't have it till tomorrow. It's all good though, TE Motorsports is taking care of me, so huge shout out to them. Bros, I will see you tomorrow. Sabrina, that was... That's basically, I said the same thing. Peace out, and keep moving forward. <laughs> the classic meme. Oh man, come on. All right, simmer. Dude, is don't do the whole thing. Did it go that far down? I was. Oh. Why'd you do it slowly? Ooh, you can see like where they were. Did it work? Yeah. Oh, just get all my arm hair. <laughs> <laughs>